Yeah, but again, the policy of the grant is not leaving them behind because there is an actual amount, a ceiling cost that they are asked to charge. That is 575. Okay. And with that 575, uh, to us, it shows a little bit of um, exclusion of boys' education for this year. Okay. And that is what the grant is here to uh, avoid, you know, exclusion. But however, because when we made an analysis of the 575, previously in region regions four, region three, four, five, six. I think still now they're paid for by the trust fund. That is the girls' education. Okay. But now, uh, and again, it was 300, some schools, and some schools will tell us 375. Okay. But now the school fees is 575. So meaning there's a surplus of 200 or 275 added to the school fees. Okay. And for the area of the boys, those are in grade 9. For the WAIC fee, initially it was, it was 371 that they paid. Now it's the same 371, but it was the school that pays half, and the parents paid half. Okay. So with the coming of the grant, uh, it has s the parents have to shoulder the responsibility of paying both the school fees, the 575 okay. and the school fees, without any uh, discount as per what okay. the, the okay. school will take. Okay, okay. thank you so much. Uh, Mrs. Zerajame, you are you're wearing almost three or four caps here, a parent, uh, a principal of a low, an upper basic school, and um, an activist as well. Now, the upper basic school come next year, academic year, they will also be benefiting from the school improvement grant. Now, what's your own take? How do you view it? Thank you. Good evening, viewers. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. With effect, effect from 2014-2015 academic year, we'll also enjoy the grants that the lower basic schools are enjoying. In my own view, it is welcomed, and I think it's the right decision. Being the chairperson, I also, I'm also the chairperson of IFANET, and as was previously said last week by Mr. Esaso, according to the Constitution of the Gambia, education is a basic human right. And the Constitution of the Gambia says, every child is entitled to a basic free and compulsory education that is from grade, grade 1 to grade 9. And our focus at the IFADET is that we hope that it will even extend to early childhood education. Because right now, early childhood education is very, very expensive. And in the upper Mexican schools, this year, the, the fees has been pegged at 575. And schools are not expected to go beyond that. On top of that, those in grade 9 are supposed to pay 371 as examination fees. What used to prevail late, uh, years past was that schools will pay half and parents pay the other half. But with, with, uh, with effect from this year, schools, students in grade 9 will pay all the examination fees to WIAC of $371. That is only for this year. But come next year, parents don't have to pay a penny. The, exa um, the government of the Gambia will be responsible for everything from the school fees to the examination fees. And the PS had said, those parents who feel that they cannot pay the examination fees this year, they can ask their child children to repeat, and next year, government will be responsible for their examination fees. So as a parent, as a mother, as, a, as an educationist, I think it's a step in the right direction, and we are thanking the government of the Gambia for coming up with such an initiative. Hi, a lot of things are said about you know, teachers handling studies in schools, that if they want to provide studies for students, they should not pay, unless if their parents are willing they themselves to come and give them something or discuss it among you know, with parents. Now, what do you say about this issue of studies? Um, as a teacher, I, th I feel extra classes is very crucial because there are times when teachers cannot fill all the syllabus that they've been given. There are times because of unfor unfor unforeseen circumstances, children cannot be in school. Maybe they have to welcome, go, go out and welcome people. And maybe there's a holiday, school holiday, and they cannot do what they're supposed to do. So teachers calling students back to give them extra classes is very important. What the ministry is saying, it's not saying that there should be no studies. What we are saying is that if there are extra studies, extra classes, the cost should be borne by the parents. The parents should come in agreement with the school, and it's the parents who should come and tell teachers, yes, you can have studies, we, will, we are ready to collect the, the study fees, and in turn we will pay you this amount. But they can use the school premises. There has, there has never been a day when, there has, when they, that it has been said, no studies. It's just that they said, if there is any studies, the school administration should not be involved. It's the parents who should be involved. And in every school, there's a parent teacher association. Also, in the, low, in the lower basic schools, 
the grants are already going on. And hundred dollars is, is being paid per child. What used to be prevailed previous years is that they, they used to pay for school fund. And the school fund that they paid, sometimes it's not every child that pays the school fund. Mm -hmm. But now, government is paid for everybody. The, the only thing is that they are, they are going to pay it per term. And for the third term, the, school, the children who are in grade three and five, they must make sure that every child in the school is registered for the NAT exams. That's the National Assessment Test. Because in some schools, what we have been seeing happening is some principals or head teachers feel that it's a competition. Those students that they, are feel, they feel that are weak, they will not register them for the exams. So now every child in grade three and five is supposed to be registered for the exams or else your, 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 your school improvement grant money will be paid on the number of students that you have presented for those two exams. Okay. Um. Mr. So, we are here again, no, representing uh, GTU Gambia Teachers Union and the welfare of teachers. Has. What is your take again on this topic? Um, thank you very much and good evening once again. Um, I think the acting director, who uh, in his capacity is also <coughs> representing the permanent secretary, should be able to clarify the issue regarding studies. Uh, our assessment and review of one of the Correspondence, or co uh, correspondence coming from the ministry to the conference of principal mm -hmm. categorically clear, you know, uh, made it clear that no study should be conducted in public schools, that is government and grant aided schools on commercial basis. So um, if there's a new development that it could be conducted and organized by parents, probably we can look at that later. But I want to shift focus a bit from and the issue of studies, because this grant has a lot of ramifications. Uh, one of them has to do with uh, supplies of school materials. If you look at upper basic schools and even lower basic schools, there are arrangements between school administrations and some suppliers in the form of school badges, report cards, and other stationery that they have already committed to, which are already in the school. And they've already started selling those things and generating reasonable a commission or interest or profit as a way of income. Okay. Now, if we are saying that it's not possible, yeah, we talked about Mother's Club. Let's take Blue Food Lower Basic as, a, as an example. It doesn't have a Mother's Club. Not all schools have Mother's Club, for example. But we can use the idea behind the Mother's Club and extend it to the PTAs and the SMCs. Now, technically speaking, what we are seeing is we are just shifting responsibility from the school. But that is not necessarily stopping any charges. As a union, we are against user fees. We are against user charges. We, anything that is going to serve as an obstacle to a child or a student's basic education, we frown over it. You understand what I mean? But what we are saying is that there are a lot of issues. The implementation strategy, what we think that could be done as a union is for us to be a little bit flexible, to be a little bit considerable, to gradually assess the challenges and correspondingly address the emerging issues but not to just draw the line abruptly. I said in, uh, in our last episode that we agree with the principles and the ideals, but the manner of implementation is what we are probably you know, concerned with. So we have a lot of issues that we think could be looked at. Jaga spoke about the issue of sensitizing the teachers. Even the arrangement to have uh, regional uh, sensitization programs could not hold. And if people are not properly informed about um, the whole issue, we can face a lot of challenges. So we are saying, let's entertain a little degree of flexibility and then gradually confront those challenges that emerge during the process of implementation, but not necessarily compromising the basic principle. I know at some level, government has a commitment with the World Bank, but this is about the Gambia and for the Gambia, our homeland. Thank you. Mr. Sangomes, yes, um, what's your comments on Sangomes? Yes, um, I'm Sangomes, acting director of Standards and Quality Assurance Directorate, representing the permanent secretary here. Um, I want to thank the panelists here, mm -hmm. and you as well. Uh, let me start with um, Jarga. I think um, what he's brought up actually is um, useful information, and I think uh, either the task force or the the general sensitization should work on that to ensure that the, the heads and the parents are adequately sensitized because they are actually fully part of this thing and if they are not fully, uh, fully sensitized then the, the, 